So we're here put in Aberdeenshire in the middle of nowhere really. But this place plays a central role in the society story and I'm delighted to be back here with you to, to help to tell that story. What do you remember of it? This is where the, the idea originated. Duncan and Kay bought this place in the early 70s and I've been visiting three or four times a year ever since then. They are dear friends yeah. and they're great people. Well, let's go and meet Kay and Duncan and find yeah. out more about their role in the society story. So things haven't changed very much since... No, no. Hello, Duncan. Duncan. Great to see you again. And to see you. So we're here where it all started with Kay and Duncan Ricardo in the farmhouse in Aberdeenshire. It's Pip Hills, the founder of the society. And my understanding is this all started with a rusty combine harvester. Uh, you were here that day, Pip. What, what do you remember about what happened that day? Duncan and Kay, along with the farm, had bought an enormous pile of rusting machinery. And they also had a field of ripe barley. And one of the bits of machinery was combine harvester. And instead of getting a contractor into Moyes, um, I happened up and we looked at the combine harvester and um, thought, well, maybe we could get this to go. And um, we did, Duncan. We got the engine to run and then Duncan tried various levers, as I recall. Yes, that's right. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Because you didn't actually know how this thing worked. You had to kind of figure it out. Not a clue. I don't think I'd ever been on a combine before this. <laughs> and of course, it's got a funny, um, the steering goes to the back wheels. So it overreacts with a 12 foot bar on the front. So you've got to watch what you're doing. So we headed out to the field anyway. And you're driving. Yeah, perhaps. that's right. Oh, perched yeah. high on top of a car. Right up the top, yes. <coughs> Um, made it down into the field, stopped and thought, wait a minute, what do we do now? So we decided, because we didn't want any straw and have to bale up the straw, that we would cut the barley nice and short and then graze the horses in the rest of the field. Perfect sense. But as Pip says in his book, that's exactly what caused a load of amusement with the locals. Fancy cutting it off at that length, you know, it's ridiculous, these, these foreigners. So then we headed through, churning away, grinding away, ended up with some barley in the hopper. I think you had to bag it up from that hopper, didn't you? Yeah. Going with bags. <coughs> and um, that was about it. And it worked. What was your role, Kay? Running behind, trying to trying to say stop, stop, That's stop, right. and, and bringing bags and yes. binder twine. <laughs> Absolutely, <That's right. coughs> um, it was just uh, partly chaos and partly frenetic. I mean, there was so much laughter, um, side splitting laughter, and it caused a bit of amusement I suppose with the local farming community oh, that's that's, right. that you, you'd got this ancient piece of machinery up and running well, and you were Pip, Pip pointed weaving out, around the Pip fields. pointed at the locals who were slowing down or stopping just that's to right. see this happening. Parking their cars yes, that's and right. causing an, an obstruction because the entrance to the field was <laughs> on the corner down there <laughs> and um, they would all get out of their cars and lean on, lean on the fence. Yes. <laughs> and watch those townies but then and remark on the fact that the combine didn't go in straight lines. No, of course not. <laughs> but then you had the last laugh because after mm -hmm. you got your crop in, the heavens opened. And they did. And they, st they stayed that way for a, oh, a good <coughs> month nearly. Yes. Yes. That's right. It, was the, it must have been the only crop of barley taken in the hoe of Amberdale. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And after that, your neighbour, uh, Stan, would come over to share a wee whiskey with you That's so right. so he he started to visit and uh, and then pip i think that was the first time you had really tasted this kind of whiskey what do you remember about stan's visit i came in one time and stayed and that evening stan came over and brought a bottle a lemonade bottle with a dark brown liquid in it. Something a bit like this. Exactly mm -hmm. like that. 
And um, he said, would we, would we like a dram? And he fetched the glasses and so, some, some water and um, Stan poured drams. And I asked what it was, and he said, it's whiskey. <laughs> what do you think it is? <laughs> and <coughs> there was no question. <coughs> and um, so I, 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 had, I had had no great liking for whiskey, I must say. Um, but I tried this stuff, and I thought it was wonderful. It tasted just astonishing. And quite unlike any whiskey I'd drunk before, I, I asked Stan what it was about, and he told me uh, where it had come from. And I mean, the story was very sim simple. Stan bought his whiskey once a year in a cask, and it was a quarter sherry cask which he bought from Glen Farclas. And when he came to visit here, he drew a bottle off. <coughs> and this was... This was the finest malt whisky, because Glenfarclas has always been great. And it had been matured in a quarter cask, sherry cask, which, of course, meant that uh, the smaller the cask, the more rapid the maturation. And it was a combination of these things, plus the fact that the whisky we were drinking, and this is something I didn't learn about until much later, it hadn't been chill filtered like most whiskey has, and it just tasted wonderful. <coughs> so I went back to Edinburgh, full of the joys, and um, told a few of my chums. So I called a meeting of my pals and said, Right, guys, here's the deal. We can buy a cask of this stuff. It will cost duty paid, it will cost £2,500 which, since there were about a dozen of us, I think, worked out at about a gallon apiece. <clears throat> and they all said, fine, you get it. We'll provide the cash. So I went up to Glen Farclas in the old Lagonda with a cheque for £2,500, and that was the beginning of it. It sounds like a series of epiphanies, because you were here, and it was your first experience of drinking that <laughs> unchilled, filtered, mm -hmm. cast strength whiskey, straight straight from the cask, yep. and then that kind of struck an idea in your head. But then everyone else that you shared your first cask with back in Edinburgh kind of had the same reaction. This was, oh, what, this was whiskey that they'd never experienced before. They all thought it was just wonderful. It was its own recommendation. So they they told their friends and the friends told the friends and the word spread and I kept getting people phoning me up and eventually um, called a meeting of the syndicate and said, look guys, this stuff appears really to be very much better than the whiskey that anyone's used to. It seems to me that there has got to be a market for stuff like this. What do you say that we form a small company and if it's as good as we think it is, we won't need to advertise it. All we've got to do is put it in bottles. And the, your friends and the friends of your friends are all going to come and buy the stuff. And that was 1983. So the society yeah. is heading into its 40th year in 2023. Uh, how does that feel from that moment back here when you first tasted that whiskey and then your friends in Edinburgh were introduced to it, that, you know, we're here almost 40 years later. The society has more than 35,000 members <coughs> now around the world. But, you know, it, it really comes back to this place where if you hadn't been here and experienced that, but that whiskey out of Stan's lemonade bottle, then, you know, it's, <laughs> we've come a long way. How, how do you feel about th that journey to the point that 40 years on, the society is a global uh, club of, of whiskey lovers. Well, quite pleased. <laughs> no question about that. Um, not totally surprised, because it became obvious quite soon after we'd started the thing that people thought it was just great. And we didn't have to advertise. We got the most amazing press 
people all over, particularly in Britain and in the United States, I mean, got extraordinary press coverage, and the press all thought it was wonderful, and the members all thought it was wonderful. Well, I'd like to raise a wee glass to Kay and to Duncan especially Thank for you. your key role in this story, that if Pip hadn't been here at that time and Stan hadn't come over with his lemonade mm -hmm. bottle of whiskey, yes. then, you know, the society might never have come oh, about because you might never have had that opportunity. Well, you never have been interested. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've, we've got a lemonade bottle of our own Ooh, with, uh, nice. with, with some whiskey from the same distillery that uh, Stan bottled his from. So I'll pour a wee measure and you can see what you think. What a colour! Well it's from the same kind of sherry cask maturation as I believe Stan's quarter cask was. So if I can raise a glass to both Kay and Duncan for your hospitality today and for your part in the foundation of the society. It's, uh, it's great to be here and to, to hear the story and of course to Pip for yes. everything that you've done for the Whiskey Society. Yes. The, fact, the founder, aye. The founder and Some the fact founder. that we're all still here. Right. Cheers, cheers to you. Cheers. 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 Slanjibar. Slanjibar. Slanjibar.